Namibia is a land of dramatic contrasts. The Namib Desert, from which it gets its name, is known as the oldest desert in the world. Our vehicle looks tiny in comparison to the rolling sand dunes. And they border the Atlantic coast for hundreds of kilometers. While in the northeast of the country is the Kavango Caprivi Strip, a stark contrast because of its humid subtropical climate, which makes it home to abundant wildlife. You don't have to go far along the Kavango River before feasting your eyes on animals in their natural environment. The river's a crucial source of water in this semi-arid country. It discharges into the Okavanga Delta, considered one of Africa's most valuable ecosystems. And the area also encompasses the migration route for the world's largest remaining herd of savanna elephants. Now many living across this huge stretch of land fear the delicate natural balance could all be at risk. Namibia is one of the hottest emerging areas for oil and gas exploration. A Canadian company called Recon Africa believes there's one of the world's biggest oil fields hiding below. We expect to confirm the existence of a working hydrocarbon system. The sky's the limit for this company when we do that. The company says it conducted a high-resolution geomagnetic survey of the untested Kavango Basin, and they believe billions of barrels of crude oil are waiting to be found. We have analyzed data from virtually every sedimentary basin around the world. We have never seen a sedimentary basin with this depth or this size that hasn't produced vast quantities of hydrocarbons. They've bought oil exploration licenses for thousands of kilometers stretching across Namibia and neighboring Botswana. The Marwano family now live in the shadow of a massive exploratory oil drill. It's in what used to be their backyard. Land, they say, was given by village elders and was once filled with crops and livestock. Andreas Marwano took us through his small field of maize to show us what's there now. I'm powerless, he told us. I cannot do anything. Our drone pictures show how close his family huts are to the well now being drilled to discover if there's oil beneath. But Andreas and his family are poor. They've hardly any money for food, never mind fighting any legal battle. I can't afford a lawyer, he says, who will help me stand up against this oil company. His family, like so many around here, lives simply, and community leaders believe poverty has made them invisible. My feeling to them, they are not considered as human beings, because their human right is not considered. Yeah, that is why they are treating them like they are not a human being. Many of the nearby villagers who we spoke to felt the same, saying they hadn't been properly consulted. Recon Africa insists they carried out numerous consultation sessions directly in the community. But the villagers told us they had a string of worries. Many of them survive by growing their own vegetables and rely on the land. They are worried because of the, the things, the oil they are doing. We don't know what the effect of that oil and our environment. We are afraid for that. We grow these vegetables in the ground, she says. If our ground is destroyed, how will we sow it again? Will the soil still be able to grow these vegetables if they find oil? And like Andreas, they too are living on land bequeathed to them by traditional leaders. What's going to happen if they do discover oil? Will we all be thrown out? Will they chase us off this land? Will Recon Africa be the new boss? Hundreds of kilometers away, it's a different world, but the village's concerns are shared. You heard those elephants just in here. Environmentalists fear any disturbance in this sensitive eco-area will have a detrimental impact on the wildlife, particularly the elephants. They're shy animals, especially alert to sound and vibration, and already at risk from shrinking territory and poachers. 
We went to one of the elephant's favorite watering holes to find out just how far they travel. This nut, the tree that it grows on, doesn't exist here. 100 kilometers away is the closest tree, approximately. So this nut was eaten 100 kilometers away and traveled here in the intestines of a, an elephant and deposited here for us to find. Namibia's waterways are crucial. It's the driest country in sub-Saharan Africa. This is what you could call the start of the Okavanga Delta, and these waters are a lifeblood for tens of thousands of people, countless wild animals and a huge amount of vegetation. It is a lifeline to a desert delta, and if anything should happen to these waters, it will have a catastrophic impact on multiple countries. It's up to us to protect it, and if we don't, it'll be gone. Taint the water, you'll taint all the wildlife. Any intervention of man in this area will change its wildness in any form and will bring more people, will bring more traffic, will bring more pollution, will bring more noise and so the wildlife will be diminished and the beauty and pure nature that's here will be harmed in some way. Many believe the pandemic restrictions meant consultation about the oil exploratory project was greatly hampered and some go further. A corona lockdown, a uh, state of emergency for six months, was used as a shield and a cover in order for them to get permission that there isn't any public participation, let's rush things through, and let's get things going before too many people know and see. But the company says they've tried to keep a collaborative relationship with all the interested parties and carried out a full environmental impact assessment before the pandemic lockdown. Up north, the drill site cuts a dramatic scar in the midst of acres and acres of bush. There is substantial poverty in the Kavanga Basin where the site is, and Recon Africa has provided a few extra boreholes to help the villagers. The area's traditional headman told us the profits from any oil discovery would transform the area and provide much needed jobs, and only the privileged would see it otherwise. You educated people who already have comfortable lives, you want to restrict development here. That means we will stay poor and probably die poor. The oil company insists it has a history of environmental care and doesn't intend to do any fracking, which environmentalists blame for contaminating groundwater while the Namibian government emphasizes oil has yet to be discovered. Our filming at the site soon attracted the attention of the workers, but they were reluctant to answer any difficult questions. This is Andreas. Hi, Andreas. Um, he actually lives on this land, and, and he feels that you've camped illegally on okay, his I'll on his land. I'll get your information to the right person. But Thank you. Would you like to say anything to him? For Andreas and the other villagers around here, there seems little recourse. Since this interaction, Recon Africa told us they're trying to address his concerns, but there's still growing anxiety about villagers' land rights and their ability to farm, and what any oil discovery would do to one of the most beautiful and unspoilt places left in the world. Alex Crawford, Sky News, Namibia.